In this video, we're going to be going over the best settings for your car photography, plus a couple of little hidden tricks that will help push your car photography to the next level. I will just say straight off the bat that if you're not familiar with basic SLR and mirrorless settings and or the exposure triangle, then this isn't the video for you. If you are familiar with all of that, then that's great. You should understand everything in this video. So to keep this simple, we're gonna break this down into the three pillars of photography. These are aperture, ISO and shutter speed. What you adjust each of these settings to will heavily depend on what your photo is, whether it's during the daytime or at night, etc. For your ISO, in most cases, you only want to use this as a last resort. So when you're first starting out, set your ISO on your camera right the way down to as low as it will go. For most cameras, this will be ISO 100. I will just jump in here and say that it's a really good idea to have a polarizing filter to cut down on any unwanted reflections in your car photos. The other two settings will depend on what you want the final image to look like and what it's gonna be used for. So let's go through some scenarios. Scenario number one. You're shooting a car photo that will be used for a composite later on. Like this, or this, or this. You get the idea. If this is the case, then my advice would be to have all of the car in focus and not just the front, because otherwise you're going to be attempting to mask out out of focus areas, which is a nightmare by the way. Been there, done that, wasn't fun. Once you set your aperture, set the other settings accordingly while keeping the image correctly exposed and again using the ISO as a last resort. If you have to set the shutter speed fairly low, then a tripod is a must. You'd be surprised at the amount of automotive photographers who use a tripod for the majority of their car photos on a shoot. Scenario two, you're shooting at night with very little to poor lighting. Aperture is obviously gonna be your priority setting here. Your f-stop number needs to be as low as it can go to let in all of the available light. If you don't have a tripod or if the shot just isn't doable with one, then you may need to introduce your ISO. It's also a pretty good idea to know your camera well and to know how far you can push your ISO. Moving on to scenario three, shooting rolling shots. A really good rule of thumb for shooting rolling shots is something that not a lot of people really know about, which is matching your miles per hour to your shutter speed. By this, I mean to get that beautiful motion blur with your rolling shots while still keeping the car tack sharp and not in motion blur. Take the speed of the car in miles per hour and apply that to the shutter speed. So if the cars were going at 40 miles per hour, you'd set the shutter speed to one over 40. This is a really effective way to get that desired look. Next, set your aperture and then your ISO if need be. This is one of those scenarios where ND filters would definitely come in really handy it basically boils down to what your aim is for the shoot and what setting you prioritize over the others. Okay, so one last trick that not a lot of people know about, which is matching your focal length to your shutter speed. What I'm talking about here is if you're shooting handheld and you're at 50 millimeters, for example, don't go below one over 50 shutter speed. If you were at 70 millimeters, don't go below one over 70 shutter speed. Obviously, this is a generalized rule based on the statistical overall proportion of photographers. So maybe you have incredibly steady hands and you can shoot with shutter speeds lower than what your focal length is. But again, it's just a really good rule of thumb to know straight off the bat. Okay, so that just about wraps it up. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a like. It really helps me out a lot. Comment and let me know if you use your tripod for the majority of the photos on your car shoots. Finally subscribe and hit the bell icon. Again it's a small gesture that really helps me out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.